What are some of the self-defeating behaviors that we become involved in that prevent most people from enjoying themselves? Some people develop the what's the use attitude. Why bother? Some people have the I really don't care. And they convince themselves that they don't care and they don't feel anything. And after a while, they really don't feel anything. Their lives are empty. Some people say, well, it's really not worth the hassle. Just too hard. It doesn't bother me anymore, the fact that I'm not living out my dream, the fact that I'm capable of doing more and I'm not doing it, the fact that I'm content but I'm not fulfilled, the fact that I'm not living my dream. Tom Ruskin... Randy Reed, in a book called I Want to Change But I Don't Know How, said people go through life many times playing it safe. He says that's the secret hope that they say to themselves, if I never let myself feel too good, maybe I'll never get hurt too badly. A lot of people don't ever do the things they're capable of doing because they allow themselves to go alone with the crowd, following the crowd. Many people have things they want to do and, and they find themselves in relationships with people who are addicted to mediocrity and they allow their behavior to influence their behavior. Following the crowd. Many people don't do it because of the fact that they allow their lack of self-confidence to immobilize them. I remember when I wanted to go into business for years, that was an agonizing thought in my mind. I wouldn't try it because I didn't believe that I could make it. Of the five things that you would like to do if you had the courage to do, I want you to pick one thing. Pick one. And here's how to set it up for yourself. That will help free you and get you unstuck. What is the worst thing that can happen if you do it? What's the worst thing that can happen? Let's say going into business for yourself or changing careers or getting a divorce. Taking some kind of chance of something that you've always thought about doing but you just haven't done it for whatever reason. What's the worst thing that can happen? Do the worst case scenario. Now, when you do the worst case scenario, you write those things down, the worst things that you fear would happen when you name your fears that put you in control. What are you afraid of? Name it, write it out so you can look at it. Confront that fear. What is it? I'm afraid that things might work out. What else, Les? I, well, I've never been in business, okay? What else, Les? Um, well, I don't have all the help I need. Okay, good. What else, Les? Well, I don't have enough money. All right, good. What else, Les? Well, I don't have a college degree. Uh-huh, what else? I'm not as good as those other guys that I've seen up there speaking. Okay, what else? Well, that's all I can think of right now. Okay, good. Now, that takes you to the next step. What are the benefits? What are the benefits of your acting courageously, taking life on? Well, Part of what happened was that I felt better within myself and I had a strong sense of self-respect. Going into business for myself, I made a lot of mistakes sometimes. I was down on myself. I felt stupid. I felt dumb because people who were in business said, why would you do something like that? Well, I didn't know. Boy, boy, were you really dumb. But the other thing is, I had to say to myself, but I did it. I did, even if I made a flop of it, I did it. I took the chance, I took the leap. What are the benefits of your acting courageously? Whatever it is that you've identified. Write the benefits down and then focus on them. Focus on the benefits, not on the liabilities, not on your fears. Focus on the benefits. That which you hold in consciousness tends to manifest itself. Think about how good you feel. Think about the level increased self-respect, the sense of self-worth that you'll feel. How good you'll feel getting up in the morning, looking yourself in the mirror because you're taking life on. The other thing is acknowledge your fears and then go into action. This book is called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. That's it. See. I believe anybody who's ever done anything, who's ever taken a chance, doesn't mean that they are not afraid. Courageous does not mean being the absence of fear. I think that being courageous is willing to do it because that's what you feel and you're going to do it anyhow, regardless. You're not going to be immobilized by your fears or your doubts. You admit, okay, I'm scared to death. Now, okay, what is it that I must choose to do? Go ahead and experience that fear, but don't let that fear immobilize you. 
In what you've done with your life thus far, is it giving you what you want? Is it giving you what you want? When you look toward the future, when you look at all that's going on out here, is there some place within yourself you say, hey, I know I need to be out there in that arena. I know I can do more than what I've been doing. I know there's some great music that I have within me that I haven't brought out here yet. Is that something that you begin to look at within yourself? See, I say if you look at your life, and if, and if you're not getting what you want, you owe it to yourself to do something differently. You owe, if you're on a job, 85%, they say, of Americans go to jobs that they're unhappy. If you're doing something eight hours a day that you don't like, it's not giving you what you want, it's not giving you a strong feeling of satisfaction and fulfillment, you're miserable, you hate to go there, you're depressed just thinking about it, you're saying, they, thank God it's Friday song every week. It's giving you headaches just thinking about it on Sunday afternoon after the football game goes off. If that's what it is, you owe it to yourself to start strategically working to change directions. See, but you know what most people will do? Most people will resist change. Most people will fight change as if change would be worse than what they're experiencing. I think we're all an underdog. I think, I think the top CEO on the planet Earth still has that doubt. We're all underdogs. Whether you're an underdog because you put yourself there to be hungry or you're just a real life underdog. Right. We're all an underdog. And so this, this is about the mind and people discovering the mind, their own mind. And one thing I know is we all have an equation. We all have an equation, like, you know, I talk about three point, you know, 3.14 is pi. There's different equations to figure out different kind of, you know, mathematical problems. We as human beings are mathematical problems. I cannot give you a book for every fucking body in this world. That's what my book, even though it's one book, is tailored to the individual. It's not like you do these five steps, you're good. No. I'm helping you figure out your fucking equation because it's different. My equation is different from your equation. Yeah. What's going to make you tick? What's going to make you go the distance? What's going to make you go to that spot in hell and say, I love this spot. It's okay. That's what this book does. It helps you figure out your 3.14. Helps you figure out your fucking mathematical equation and say, oh, because once you figure out the equation in any math problem, you no longer fail, man. You got it figured out. What are your thoughts on people who are unsure about their own physical strength? Do you feel that everyone should push themselves physically and that's a really important part of making you who you were? I think pushing yourself physically is the number one factor of life. That is the true spot where you can really dive deep into, life's about self-discipline. It is about self-discipline. We tend to do the things that are easy. And that is, the, it, it builds no mental toughness, it builds no mental hardening, it builds nothing. When you work out, working out is where you can build that the fastest. Because it's a constant, it gives you instant feedback. Instant, yeah, you may not lose the weight you want to real fast, but the discipline it takes, it transfers over to all aspects of your life. It's not, people don't, man, why are you always working out? Stop, stop looking at it that way. This is the foundation of life. When you look in the mirror, every morning we all look in the mirror to get ready to go to work, to go anywhere. The first thing you see is your reflection. If you don't like what you see in the morning, you lost the war already. It's not about even liking what you see. It's about looking in the mirror and you may start, man, I feel different. That reflection maybe not, that reflection is not everything. It's a feeling you're supposed to get. So you have to, in life, once you leave your house, the war begins. In your house, you have some control. And that reflects in that mirror, you have to control that reflection in the mirror. That's how you start your day. If you leave your house feeling like, okay, I can fight. I've established the mentality to fight. And that all that comes from working out. It's not just from, you know, you can't find that in the office. 